Tracy from Paper Rock to Your Studio, and today I'm sharing with you another page in my Mix and Match book from Seven Gypsies Architecture Line. This is a ring-bound journal with some really nice covers and then an assortment of different papers that come with it inside. And I had this uh, printed canvas sheet from Canvas Corp Brands. Remember, Canvas Corp Brands has Canvas Corp. Seven Gypsies, Tattered Angels, all underneath their umbrella. So all these products that I'm using today are from the same company, even though they sound like they're from different companies. I know it's confusing. But I had this printed canvas sheet that had a cow on it, and I wanted to use the cow because I've been thinking about my grandma, and uh, my mom has been talking about some of the stuff that happened in the past, and grandma's just been on my mind. And she collected cows and actually lived next to a field of cows. And one time I woke up when I was staying with her and all the cows were over in the yard. <laughs> They'd gotten out and wandered over and they were eating up the flowers and grass. She was mad. But anyway, I was thinking about that and I was thinking about uh, using this cow and what would go with the cow. And I also thought that it would be fun to use some material as a texture on an art journal page. You know, we don't do that very often. Um, what brought that to mind was uh, some other videos that I, were watch I was watching about jelly printing on fabric and using that. And anyway, all these things just, <coughs> excuse me, they just wrap up in my mind and I start thinking about stuff and what I should do. And then I wake up in the morning and I think I should do that or I should do this. Today, this is what I decided to do. So I cut out the cow from the canvas sheet and I also cut out a piece of the sheet that said farmhouse because uh, that's that was what the page was going to be about was the cows and the farmhouse and, and grandma and all that. So I decided that I needed some papers and I was looking through all my Canvas Corp stuff. I'm on their design team. I, I know you guys, most of you guys know that, but if you haven't watched my videos before, I've been on the Canvas Corp brand's uh, creative crew design team. This is my third year. So I have a collection of, of their products and I keep them separate from my other stuff because I know that I might need to to make a project using their products. Uh, of course their products go great with other people's products. It's not like you can't mix and match but in this particular day I was just going to use theirs because they have so much of this type of a uh, old time um, you know, worn out, worn but not worn out type of a vibe to their products. And so I I grabbed the uh, 8x8 paper pack from Architecture 7 Gypsies. Um, I think that, <coughs> sorry, I don't know why I'm coughing today. I think that's pad one, but it has a lot of different papers in it. And I picked out a couple of them that look like peeling paint, which I think is a really cool look. There's a pinkish one and a kind of whitish one, and I thought I might want to use that to make some little, um, some, <clears throat> some shapes that are representative of a house in the background behind my cow. And I have this architecture sticker pack. Um, architectures are a dimensional sticker. They're, they're made using actual photographs and then made into this texturized, interesting kind of a vinyl, 3D type sticker. It's, it's hard to describe until you've actually seen it, but they're super cool and they look exactly like what they're supposed to be. And I picked this one that looks like a rusty tin roof. Tin roof. Rusted. If you know what that's from, you can leave a comment below. <laughs> anyway, so I cut it up. The, the, they're vinyl stickers. They're self-adhesive. You can cut them if you want to. So I cut a couple pieces of it to be the little roofs of my houses, which are made out of the paper that looks like peeled paint. You get the idea here. And then I had this other tall base uh, architecture that looks like chicken wire. It's chicken wire. I mean, you feel like when, when you look at it, you feel like it's going to cut you if you... If you mess with it too much, you're going to get cuts. But it's just vinyl. And um, these these architecture stickers are so unique. There's just nothing else out there that's like them. They're, they're crazy cool. 
So I, I trimmed off some of the chicken wire without cutting myself because it's just vinyl. And I stuck that down on the side and then I'm like uh, auditioning all my different pieces so that I can figure out how to get them all stuck down. I'm using a um, iCraft by ThermoWeb um, tape runner. It's got like little tiny dots of glue on it. This, this paper that I'm using is the background. Isn't a very heavyweight paper. Um, so it won't really go with the type of mixed media where you slap a bunch of wet stuff on it and glue and everything because that's going to warp it. It's, it's not heavy enough for that. So I was just using the tape instead. You could use a glue stick, but I happen to have this, this tape runner on my desk. Then I got out some of the parchment rub-ons. If you haven't tried these, these are the best rub-ons ever. <laughs> and I know a lot of people have tried them because, um, Christine from the company said that's the number one seller from the architecture line that they brought out last year is these parchment rub-ons. They come off that parchment like butter. I mean, they are so easy to use, so easy to use. And so I, I trimmed out a couple pieces, a little um, plant, herb looking thing, and then a, a bee. And I'm going to th apply those. I like to, uh, some people just leave the sheet whole and just, you know, take that section and rub it. But it, the sheet's so big, I just like to cut out the little pieces that I'm going to use. And then on the, the opposite side of one of those pieces of paper um, from the 8x8 pack, they're double-sided. Um, I wanted a window, and then I saw on the back that it, there was these little picture frames of little, like, old-timey pictures. And so I cut out a couple of those to make windows. I only ended up using one, but it has an old timey guy um, in the window. <laughs> uh, it's a picture frame, but it's a window because it's got a frame. So then it's a window, you know, and he, maybe he's the farmer. I don't really know. Um, so then I have the burlap, which is from the 12 by 12 natural colored burlap sheet. I've got this, uh, canvas piece. I'm gluing these all down with iCraft um, mixed media glue, which has a nice fine nozzle. I glue down the uh, canvas piece of the cow and I've got my rub-ons on there. Um, it's looking pretty cool. It's a collage. This is a collage style mixed media piece. Why is it mixed media? Because I've used so many different media. I've got canvas on there. I've got paper on there. I've got rub-ons. I've got burlap, I've got the vinyl stickers, I've got everything. It's like all different uh, mixed up stuff. I'm also going to use some uh, Tattered Angels paint here in a mi minute. So down here at the bottom, I wanted some little, uh, I don't like it when things are floating, like they don't have a ground. That really bothers me. I don't like things to float. So I needed something to ground this page and I wanted to bring that same color and texture from the top through the composition and down to the bottom so that your eye follows it. And so I drew some little glue lines with the uh, glue, which has that nice nozzle. And then I used some of the burlap that I had torn off the edges to make uh, that top piece kind of more rustic looking. I, I glued those down and made little grass stalks kind of at the bottom. And then I got out some of the baseboard paints. Now, Tattered Angels has a lot of paints, and these are mists, but the reason they're called baseboard is they are more opaque mist, and they don't have any um, mica in them, so they're not shimmery. They're not 100% opaque. I wish they were, but they are a lot more opaque than, say, the glimmer mists and, and those types. So I'm using it kind of as a paint. Um, I applied the baby pink color on the udders and the nose and things of the, the little Holstein cow. And I used the inside plastic to apply it. Like, you know, I just took the, the nozzle out and used that kind of as a paintbrush. But then when I got to this part, I decided to use an actual paintbrush, um, adding uh, some dimension to the cow by adding some different colors in. And then also, adding shadows around my little house and things like that to make everything more cohesive and also, um, I don't know, more dimensional. You're adding more colors. The more colors you add, 
the better, I think. So then I got out this vine color, which is probably my favorite of the um, baseboard colors. It's it's kind of a mossy green, light green. I really like it. That's that's my favorite. And I added some of that down at the bottom there where the ground is for the cow. The cow is not in space. It needs to be grounded. <laughs> it's not floating in space. And um, I with the with the uh, plastic thing on the inside, I did some splattering with that same green color. On the actual paper, there's kind of a a green uh, plant that was in the middle already printed on the paper. So that's kind of in the background, like it's a tree coming out from the back of the house. And I don't know, this was fun. I used the the straw on the inside of the cardboard colored baseboard mist to go around the edges and give kind of a um, rustic border around the edge of a darker color. And I was pretty much done. So if you enjoyed this project, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment so I know you were here. Subscribe if you haven't already, turn on your notification bells if you want to know when my new videos come out, which is mostly every other day. And then if you want any of these products, the links are in the description box below the video and you can link over to Canvas Corp Brands and check them out. So that's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.